on guys i hope you're having a great week so i'm just gonna sit here and talk to you for a little bit um i don't really have a goal with this video other than to sort of maybe talk about some stuff that you can relate with and maybe figure something out so when i was younger i remember very vividly like i would lay on the couch and i would look up i would be in the basement i would look up at the wood and i would just lay there for like minutes and start to think about all the people that put the house together and all and how the wood was made and where the wood come from and then the tree and who planted the tree and you know what men worked on it what are they doing with their lives do they have family do they have kids i would just keep going deeper and deeper into the thought and uh i read a comment recently by one of our viewers one of our monks Hussein Naji I believe is his name and he said that when he was younger he would look at a water bottle a plastic water bottle and he would just sit there and look at it like how was the plastic made what the factory was in who built this the company and so on it's very similar to that and uh, he said at the end he realized all of that thinking was sort of useless but how he viewed that water bottle sort of carry it in to how he would view everything. Anything that he would learn when he got older. And he said it was almost too much. He had to let go. I remember I had this weird sort of thing. Whenever I would travel, um, I would go into random bathrooms. And while I was into the bathroom, I would go into the city and drop off cars for work. I was a driver. Drop the car off, use the bathroom, and I would think to myself, I'm never going to be here again. And it made me feel very small and insignificant. And I would be standing there and just almost be sentimental towards the bathroom. I know that sounds very weird. And I would leave and I would feel like this sort of loss. And I would think to myself, there's going to be thousands of people that use this same bathroom. They're going to be in this building and I'm never going to know their names. I'm never going to see them again. And that like that's always been there i would just like sort of take a step in a, in, a, in a way i sort of feel gratitude in the moment that i'm at a place and i'm alive but i also feel like a sadness that i will never know what's to come of this place or the people that visit this place and when i examine it i realize that's kind of like my ego has always been trying to hold on to something it's always tried to make meaning of everything. It's tried to figure everything out, to hold things secure, to find my, my meaning in it. And since examining this and understanding what, I, what my ego is trying to do, I'm able to kind of let that go. It would make me anxious. It would make me insecure. I've noticed that a lot as I grew up with women, you could say. Or, and not currently, but I, obviously I've had to get over this. But when I would learn stuff online, YouTube, you know, YouTube more than ever, I would hear someone talk and I would just like, it would almost, I wouldn't even be insecure. But when I would listen to the video, it would like, I would start thinking and then I would make myself insecure. I would get like these weird thoughts. I'm not good enough. Oh, I got to do this. I got, I need this. When it came to anything, body dysmorphia, I don't have that now, but you know, how do I look? I'm not, I'm not good enough yet. Got to get this, got to get that. Uh, worried about what people think about me, kind of losing loved ones, people moving away, so much pain, so much suffering. My brain's always trying to hold on to everything. So losing the ego was freedom. Losing all hope was freedom. As Tyler Durden said in the movie Fight Club, losing all hope was freedom. And learning to let go, guys, is the most freeing thing, I believe. Learning to let go and let God. And that's why I've been sort of talking to you guys about Stoic philosophy lately. Because I believe that being a Stoic is, is really accepting that we don't have control. And the ego is the... First thing in a human being that tries to have control over everything. And the anxious mind is constantly worried about the future. 
It's thinking about the past. And when you're present, none of that stuff exists. There is no future. There is no past. All that there is, is right here and right now. And any thought that you're having is, is a threat, sort of. Not good or bad, but it can pull you out of the here and now. And the Stoic philosophy is just a beautiful thing to understand. Not to even kill your motivation or to kill your fire for life. You know, that fire in the belly. Um, but to realize that it's going to be okay. And to see why we suffer so much. Uh, I believe Christianity is a really, really good way to understand Stoicism. I think it's a, a more advanced form of Stoicism. Uh, if you believe in God and, you know, and you start looking at all of your thoughts as, you know, they could be tricky, that could be the devil. We sort of talked about that, but it's just a story. It's just a way to remember whatever religion you want to think. You don't even got to be religious. I'm just saying, I think that these religions sort of were trying to make us stoic. Because life is chaotic, man. Wars are happening. People are dying. Imagine a thousand years ago, people are getting diseases left and right, dying at age 25, leaving home, getting the plague, the black plague, you know? People need hope, all right? I, I could tell you all day, just believe in the universe, that the universe is going to save you. You know, you're a part of it. Everything's going to be okay. That's fine, but it's easier to remember if you believe that God has your back. If you believe in God, everything's going to be okay. All right, and uh, it's a good way to remember. But like I said, the reason why we meditate, the reason why we are doing all this stuff is to get familiar with observing our thoughts and seeing how it's making us, our ego tries to fight. Because, you know, it'll go away. It doesn't want to, though. It's scary. The reason that I tell you guys, you know, about all these video games and stuff, about putting away the video games, selling your PS4, about getting away from passion, is because the ego wants passion. The ego wants something to fill the boredom. So I'm not saying just like get rid of the video games to, to be some super disciplined monk. What I'm getting at is a really good life, I believe, with peace is, is minimal. Once you really realize the truth that you don't need anything, you can sort of go from there and enjoy life. I think many people think that they need to do something when they're bored instead of realizing that some of the most important, some of the most meaningful things come out of the boredom. Some of the most create, creative ideas come from having nothing to do. And yet we're always trying to do one thing after the other. Stimulate ourselves, get out of this way of feeling, feel happy, feel sad, feel emotional, be worried about someone, and it's all up here. And so our life just reinforces that ego. I feel like this when I'm bored, this is what I like to do. And we never really get to understand ourselves completely. And we never really see like deeper, deeper into what is meaningful. So it's all ego, man. And it's not necessarily bad, okay? That's, I don't want to attach a good or bad. It's how you want to live. It's how you want to live. And I have come to the conclusion with my own self, it's very difficult. Because when you start getting going down the road, it says in the Bible, you know, the road is narrow. Heaven is here. But uh, the road to heaven is narrow. And it's because when you start going off the road, with stuff like you do drugs, you start watching the porn and whatnot. You know, we've talked about this, but just one thing after another leads you down that path. And it's not so much doing those things, but th the uh, the going back to the narrow road is very hard. Because it's like, man, the pleasure, 
I get the pleasure and I'm like, okay, I feel good, but then it's like, okay, well, now I'm bored again. Now what? Instead of making peace, being there, being a whole. So the road is narrow and we fall off and it's just tough, man. And, uh, you know, you can live your whole life like that. I'm not telling you you need to do something, live a certain way, but yeah. Yeah, I could see the ego. It's sinister. I'm learning. I'm learning how to understand myself better. So I'm continuing the meditation, guys. You know, that really helps you to see what is you. You notice that all of these things you've been thinking your whole life, like, you know, when you were younger, I can't wait to have sex. I used to think that all the time. I can't wait to have sex, man. It feels so good. Or I can't wait to get a girl. And, or even to think, like I would watch all these videos on game and all RSD. And I look back and I'm just like, I'm, I was a fool. I laugh. I was a fool. I don't need any of that stuff. You realize you don't need any of that stuff. And uh, man, it's a hard pill to swallow. It's the golden pill. You don't need anything. And yet our entire life, we felt that we were going, we were growing for something, to get something, to have an end goal, to accomplish something, to get somewhere until we were going to be, you know, now we're complete. It's always been a growing thing, like a journey, you know, a journey. And it's not, it's, uh, it's not. And, and having death in mind, knowing you're going to die. Being okay with that memento mori. Remember you will die. Can snap you out of that. Make it peace with death. Get back to the present. Enjoy life. All that it's got to offer. Okay? And um, you take it. Be stoic in the face of triumph or disaster. Rudyard Kipling's poem. If, if you can dream... And not make dreams your master if you can think and not make thoughts your aim. If you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same. He calls those, he calls triumph and disaster imposters. Because we, it's all ego. Like I said, we're happy and sad. We win. We're successful. And then we fail. And so there's this chasm. There's this uh, dichotomy, you know, between success and failure. But he's saying you treat them like imposters. To be watched carefully. Treat them the same. Don't rejoice one moment and be sad the next because it will take you on a whirlwind. And some people have been sort of deceived into being, well, life should be a whirlwind. Life should be emotion and fire and flame and passion and lust and desire. And I've tried it, man. I really have, you know. And I've seen the truth. I've seen where that road ends. Oftentimes, you know, there's a few people that get lucky. They, and we see it with the lotto winners and where they end up. We see it with the basketball stars, the football players, get a bunch of money and they blow it all. Not saying everyone. We see the guys that, you know, are doing good. They're going to the Ivy League schools. And then years later, we hear about them and they burn out. They meet that void later in life. They don't know how to handle it, man. Because the foundation isn't, isn't complete. It's not a trusting in God. It, there's no foundation. It's built on sand. So it just falls apart. So to meet with triumph and disaster and treat them the same is, is amazing to think about. To understand. Because we're always like, you go, go, go. Be successful. Do this. Do that. Take one day at a time. Be here. Honor God, man. Honor God. Okay? And uh, we're going into the new week. And I really have been trying to get my sleep schedule back on track. 
I've been waking up at 7 lately in the morning. The sun's just coming up. It's a beautiful thing. I feel like this spiritual presence more than ever. Like I'm waking up. I'm alone. The sun's coming up. I'm rising with the sun. It's beautiful. It's springtime almost, guys. And uh, it's a time to be grateful. Gratitude. To be present to, you know, to be thankful. To, to get out of our heads. To get into life. Do what's in front of us. Approach the day ahead. And uh, give God the glory. Alright? So guys, thanks for listening to this. And let me know, you know, what you guys want to hear about this upcoming week. What we can, you would like to talk about. And I'll see you guys very soon. Stay strong. Have a blessed night. Peace.